This is the beginning of module 11, uh, investment in new generation technology. So we're going to talk about um, investment in generation, the levelized cost of energy calculations, uh, capacity markets, and uh, investment in electricity transmission. So what do we mean by electricity generation investment? Electricity generation is highly capital intensive. We're talking about uh, building a new power plant. Uh, for example, $550 million for the 625 megawatt Sutton combined gas uh, combined cycle gas plant. Uh, so they're, they're, they cost a lot of money to build. Investors will only build plants if the present value of the future profits exceeds upfront capital costs. That kind of makes sense, All right? So if you plan, if you do some calculations, you find your profits are going to exceed your your uh, investment costs over time, then um, you're going to build the plant. And this is why we ended up with vertically integrated monopolies in the beginning of electric uh, power back in the, the early 19th, 20th century. In order to decide when to invest, uh, companies uh, need to need to figure out what the present value of their investment is going to be. So this equation gives us a sense of what that present value is. We have present value on the left-hand side, PV, equals the negative of the fixed cost, that's the large F, plus the sum from the uh, initial time period, T equals one, to capital T, which is the expected life of the plant, the end time period, maybe 25, 50, 100 years, times the, the, the sum of the, the prices, PT, minus the marginal cost or the operating costs, so kind of the, the marginal profits, at times the quantity generated in period T, all discounted back to the present, uh, present time period. So the sum of all profits discounted back to the present time period. There's a lot of uncertainty in this equation. Future electricity prices are unknown. So if we're, the lifetime of the plan is 50 years, we have to forecast electricity prices future, <coughs> um, 150 years out. Uh, future fuel costs are also no, unknown. We don't know, um, you know, if this is a natural gas plant, we don't know what the natural gas prices are going to be 50 years from now. Future generation quantities are unknown. We don't know what demand is going to be. Some of this can be offset. We often see companies signing long-term contracts to lock in prices and quantities. These are forward contracts. We learned about these. It's especially true for wind and solar generators, but um, not necessarily true for others. Uh, the coal plant here in, in Fort Collins, they, they have uh, long-term contracts with uh, coal mines, and so they at least know what their their input costs are going to be, but uh, they don't know what the prices are going to be. The, the, uh, the prices for electricity, their output. Um, relative importance of capital cost varies. So um, the for so let's compare the, the capital cost for thermal generation versus renewable generation, thermal being gas, coal, nuclear, and biomass. They all have larger variable. Uh, cost of operation. So the uh, the initial startup costs are, are less important uh, because they also have to think about their variable costs. Um, and then the renewable gen gener generation have larger initial capital costs, but their uh, variable costs are essentially zero. So the, the, uh, the capital costs are more important for the renewables. This leads us, we've seen this equation before, it leads us back to the levelized cost of energy. It's the average price that allows a plant to break even. So if we set the present value of a plant equal to zero, so if we went back to that previous equation and set it equal to zero, this would mean the plant breaks even and we can substitute the levelized cost of energy for price. We can figure out um, what, essentially what price um, would allow the, the plant to break even. So we, we set the the present value equation equal to zero and rearrange and we get F on the left hand side and we've exchanged price for levelized cost of energy. And this means that the levelized cost of energy is the price per megawatt hour needed to recover fixed and operating costs. So we can rearrange this and get back to our levelized cost of energy expression. 
Uh, many assumptions, including the discount rate, future fuel prices, future generation quantities, as we just mentioned. The levelized cost of energy is, of course, sensitive to these assumptions. Um, so, for example, what happens to the attractiveness of wind power relative to gas if the discount rate increases? So if the discount rate increases, so wind power, um, the marginal cost is going to be essentially zero. So we could even... If we had, if we were thinking about the levelized cost of energy for wind power, this CT term would be basically zero, and so we would only be concerned in the numerator here with the F, and that would mean that um, uh, discounting the marginal cost is uh, is going to make no difference for the wind power producers. It will make a difference for the natural gas producers because they have a marginal cost. They have a positive CT term here. Ensuring adequate generation capacity. In a competitive market, the marginal cost of the highest cost operating generator sets the price. What does that mean? Remember back to our aggregate supply curve or our aggregate dispatch curve, um, aggregate marginal cost curve. Um, the place where the demand intersects that aggregate supply curve, that's, uh, that's where the, uh, the wholesale electricity prices is, is um, produced from uh, and who, whoever is the last generator, whoever is in that aggregate supply curve and at the point at which demand intersects that, inter that aggregate supply curve, that's the producer that's setting the wholesale electricity price. Their marginal cost, as long as they're bidding their marginal cost, their marginal costs are setting the wholesale electricity price. So think about the most expensive plant that operates only during the highest demand hour of the year. So remember, in that aggregate supply curve, not all the generators are going to be producing all the time. Only the ones to the left of the place where the demand intersects the supply curve, um, those are the plants that are going to be producing. The plants to the right of that, where the demand intersects the uh, aggregate supply curve, those plants to the right are not going to be producing. Uh, they will only be producing when demand is extremely high and intersects way out on the right of the aggregate supply curve. And so sometimes we have plants that only supply a couple hours of the year, uh, not even a couple a couple hours of the day, but a couple hour, a couple hours of the year. So what do we what can we say about this uh, the really expensive plants that operate and only serve the highest demand hours of the year. Well, they pay their marginal cost, so this that's important for them, but they only pay it when they're, they're running, so they only pay their marginal cost maybe one hour of the year. How do they cover their fixed costs if it, they only operate, operate one hour per year? Now, that's a really good question. Uh, they've invested millions of dollars to create the plant, but it's only operating a couple hours of the year. Why would this generator continue to operate? If the generator goes out of business, the demand will exceed supply when uh, during peak hours. The grid needs this generator, right? So if the generator decides to go offline because it's only operating one hour per year and it can't recover its fixed cost, then the demand is going to exceed supply during those uh, peak periods and uh, will get blackouts. So one solution is capacity com payments, and we see this in most markets across uh, the U.S. Firms are paid to make capacity available. So in other words, this firm, this, this generator is just sitting around waiting to produce uh, when demand is at its highest. And these are called capacity markets. Firms bid into the capacity markets to establish market the market price for capacity. For example, a 50 megawatt 50 megawatts might be available at all times for $1 million this year. That's a firm bidding into the market saying, I'm willing to supply 50 megawatts at any time you want. They'll just keep that additional 50 megawatt capacity in reserve. They won't dispatch it unless uh, the ISO comes to them and says, we need that additional 50 megawatts because demand is at its peak. And they, the ISO is going to pay them $1 million to do that per year. The ISO then takes the lowest bids, of course, and the capacity payments cover the fixed costs of keeping the plants open. This extends the life of very old plants that would otherwise be shut down. These plants operate only a few hours each year. 
Alternative solutions exist. In Sweden, New Zealand, and Finland, the ISO uses its own generation to, keep, to provide backup capacity during the peak hours. So the, the ISO actually invests in generation capacity to meet the, uh, the peak demand. The ISO still needs to decide which plants to acquire, though. The fundamental problem is that demand is unresponsive to price. Uh, in other words, the retail, uh, the consumers do not respond to the wholesale price changes. The, re the consumers have inelastic demand because their prices are fixed. Capacity markets would be unnecessary if people reduce consumption in response to higher prices. This is the case for real-time pricing. So next up, we'll talk about transmission.